this morning I would like to give you five different suggestions or five guidelines that remind us about our responsibilities as parents. The very first suggestion that we should give to our children, that we should mold and inculcate into our children's life, it is this. We should teach them that everything is possible. Do you believe as a parent that everything is possible? Do you think that in your life that every and anything is possible? You see, one of the skills that they don't teach us in school, it is how to become a parent. One of the skills that they do not teach us in school, it is how to teach our children or give our children a life of spirituality. And for many of us, including the pundits and the realized masters in this world, we do not have all that is required. But the process of parenting, we should learn the skills of giving children this value of spirituality. And the very first practical way of teaching our children or giving them spirituality into their, in their lives, it is one is to teach them that everything is possible. How do you do that? How do you teach a child that everything is possible? It starts with the message of last week and the message is sit in silence. It is very important that we teach our children meditation. And you would say, Babs, how can I teach a little child how to meditate? How you teach a child between the time of birth to the time of approximately 12 years of age, it is by example. It is impossible to expect a child, not every child will do it, to sit down quietly in silence. Forget about the concept of meditation or just sitting in silence. It is sometimes very difficult for a child to do. But as a parent, for us to give them the ability of knowing that everything is possible, we need to teach them where to start. And in doing that, we need to show that it is important to us as an adult that we take time out from our routines and our schedules to sit in silence. It doesn't mean without the TV on. It doesn't mean reading a book. It doesn't mean not reading a, not, it doesn't mean reading a newspaper. That is not silence. Silence means sitting and do nothing. Do you know it is difficult to do nothing? That anytime we can do nothing, you're in the highest state of meditation of this. It's not laziness. It is when the mind becomes relaxed of entertaining thoughts. The first thing we should do for our children in teaching them that everything is possible it is to teach them that it is important to be silent. We need to inspire them into nature. We need to take them into the natural phenomenon that this universe has given to us. Do you know that when you go into this, go into the backyard of the temple and you walk into the garden that Babs has created and you just walk there by yourself and you look around and you look at the plants and you look at the flowers and you look at the plants that created flowers that created fruits and you ask yourself, where did that fruit come from? You see, in teaching our children how to learn that everything is possible, we can teach them that in nature. Because when you look at a seed and you ask yourself, where does that seed get the instruction and the intelligence to know when to germinate? And the scientists may say, well, when it's introduced to water and there's light. But it's not just the water and light. Teach your children that in the familiar situations, that there is another dimension. There is what is known as infinite possibilities in every situation. Over the last couple of years, my children, Vandana and Kesha, they would bring home little red bean seed and they would say that they have an experiment to make. And they would put this uh, in a little cup. They would soak some toilet paper and put the red bean in the cup. And they would put it out in the sun and every day they would learn to put a little water. And over a three or four days, they are amazed that in this seed, there was something that instructed it almost to bring life, to come out of that dormant state and sprout into this world. You see, in a very familiar situation as adults, we think, put water exposed to light, there's, it's going to grow. But teach your children and teach yourself to go into nature and ask yourself, what is it in this universe that this grand architect that is called God, he has placed and coordinated this entire universe as an orchestrated grand demonstration of talent and everything works by perfection. One author once said, 
when I go into nature, I lose my sense of intellect and I become awe, with, become in awe with bewilderment. I'm almost lost. I feel insignificant in the context of what this grand universe is doing. This universe is showing us that everything is possible. Two things. One, teach them to be in silence. Secondly, take them into nature and become in awe in what is known as familiar situations. The first concept, teach your children that everything is possible. The second suggestion is teach your children that if you want to get something, learn to, what you have to do, babe? Learn to give it, right? Anytime you want something in this world, teach your children that you must learn to give it. And there are simple ways that you can do it. Start by giving something else. Ask them every day to give something to someone else in your family. And what do you give? Hmm? You can give a smile. You can say, Keisha, give a smile to your sister. Especially when you're fighting, stop. Learn to give at that moment. Give a smile. Give a compliment. Give a word of advice. Give a flower. As a matter of fact, you can give anything. But teach your children that it is important to know that when you give that, it is going to come back to you in many ways. Because when you smile at Vandana Keshav, she doesn't have a choice. She will smile back with you. When you give a parent something, whether it's something that they should be proud of, automatically there is something to be changed. Your children, in every single moment in your life, in every single situation, we must learn to give something. More than that, we must, we must teach them how to be inspired in receiving. You know, it's, do you know that it is more difficult to receive than to give? You'll say, but also, it is more difficult to receive than to give. And let me clarify what I mean by that. It is more difficult to receive graciously than to give. Because sometimes when we receive things, we don't show what is known as gratitude. And in every single moment in our life, children's life, we need to teach them how to be, to receive graciously. And how do you teach them that? Start with the dinner table, or the breakfast table, or the lunch gathering. Before you start eating, our tradition is very rich, you know. We told that every time you're going to sit for a meal, at the least, say Om Shri, Shri what? Krishna Arpanam. When we offer prasadam here on a Sunday morning, we say Om Shri Krishna Arpanam. But I want you from today, if you don't do it as yet, every time you sit for a meal, touch your food, touch your heart and say, Lord, Om Shri Krishna Arpanam. And we say, Babs, but I don't eat chana and aloo every day. Now. Let's say Krishna Arpanam Kari. Other type of food that I eat. Me? I insist today that you also say Krishna Arpanam. It matters not what your lifestyle is. Whatever you do, whatever you offer to God, should be equivalent to what you offer to yourself. And if that becomes connected, then you should not feel ashamed of your lifestyle. Of course, there's room for improvement based on what you want and see for yourself. But if your lifestyle is a particular way in terms of what you eat, please, say it from the Christian sense, say Krishna Arpanam. Offer it. In the name of Krishna, I eat this. If you teach your children that that is an expression of gratitude to God or to His universe for this meal, then they will express gratitude for other things. They will be grateful for their health. My son Keshav suffers with, with asthma and he knows what it is like to go and spend two days or an entire night in casualty in, in Mount Hope. He knows what it is to suffer and sit there waiting with that uh, piece of equipment on his nose, ventilated attached to learn or to help him breathe. And every day, he should learn what it is to be grateful to have health on the days that he is free of asthma. And we need to teach them that he should be grateful for a healthy day. We need to teach our children to be grateful for the friends that they have. You see, it is the simple things that when we help them to understand, when you give something to someone else, automatically they will realize that the universe will respond in a positive way and in the same way. We need to teach our children that when they make a choice, they change the future. 